Are we ready? Ready to go. Okay, Will, if everyone's back in the room, love having our family together. There. Okay, well, welcome everybody. It's good to see part of you on the Zoom. There we go. Welcome everyone to the May meeting of IFMA San Diego. My name is Sherry Perkins and I'm your president. Um, I want to say happy F World FM Day. So you all, all can just congratulate yourselves. It's your day and thank you for being here. We know you have a million other places to be. Thank you for being with us. Well, as you saw on the screen, we do have some uh, announcements. We do have our monthly meeting, but not for June. June is a special month. June is when we're having our golf outing. And that's on June 4th. Now I know that right now we're at 75% of the tea times have been sold, but there's still room for more. So come on and sign up. In fact, on that slide, you'll see a QR code and that'll lead you right to the registration page. We also have plenty of room for more donations to the silent auction. Now the silent auction is really fun. And let me tell you, it's competitive, but you're still able to get something there because you know we're gonna hold back Glenda. She's not gonna be able to to do it, you know, try to win everything. But you're gonna have a great time to just try to get a subject from the silent auction. It's all for the Ronald McDonald House and we appreciate you giving towards that charity. We know you're gonna have a good time at the golf outing. So please sign up if you're a golfer. If you're a miniature golfer like me, cheer them on because there's not much else we can do. We only putt putt. So thank you for that. Next we wanna mention that on October 6th, Set your calendar for October 6th. That is when we're going to have our expo with BOMA and IRIM and SDBEA, Alphabet Soup, whatever that is, San Diego something. I'm sure somebody knows and we'll put that in the comments. But October 6th, we're all going to get together at the Del Mar Fairgrounds and we're going to have a really good time there in their new outdoor venue, looking at all the different vendors, finding solutions to the problems that you have in your facility that you've been wondering what to do. I love expos. I solve a lot of problems in my facility from going to expos. We also wanna remind you that every Tuesday from four to 5 p.m. on Instagram, Glenda and I are going over the announcements for the week, for the month, and we're also interviewing very interesting people. We had Phil from PMS on there one time and Ann Bench from Cultura. We've had Brett to talk about the golf tournament and Brett is on our membership committee. He's also on the golf committee. We've had so many different people and we've got a lineup coming too. We have people from international who can't wait to come talk to you all about the different programs that they have, whether it is Facilathon, which you're gonna find out about at the end of this month or next month, something like that. Young, um, young professionals and the chapters and the, the place that they have in each chapter, you're going to want to find out about those things. It is interesting. So you can come on, you can ask questions, you can be with us, or you can watch it afterwards, and that's okay. Just give us a little love with a little heart. I understand that's a good thing. And follow us at, um, I think it's on that slide right there, it's hashtag IFMA SD. If you have if you need to know what else is going on, we have newsletters that go out. Please check your emails. We have newsletters that go out to everyone's email that tells you the dates of the events, how to register, and the interesting articles and white papers. For example, as, as he flew um, by there, Will, let's go back to the credentials. On June 2nd, if you would like to go for your CFM credential, we are having an exam prep class on June 2nd, and there's still time to register until May 19th. So please go ahead and do that. There's a little QR code for you to click on so that you can do that. If you're interested in the FMP credential, right up there are the dates that those will be um, held. And it is live classes and you can register for those classes. The SFP courses will be towards the end of the year. So if you wanna take all of them and congratulations if you do, you have time to get them all done. So I think with that, we're going to introduce our newest member who's now overwhelmed with everything I just said. Mr. Jim, let's see. He's from Ace Relocations. His name is Jim Misner. Jim, are Meister, you here? Yes. yes, I am. Okay, I'm just going to read you. He is Hi. with Ace Relocations in San Diego and he's part of the Atlas Group. And he's a uh, San Diego Area Commercial Business Development Manager. He is a SoCal native. 
and he lived in San Diego for almost 25 years. Lucky I had to come out of Compton. His interests are poker, riding motorcycles, camping, and astronomy. And he's got two sons, not one, two, two sons. His oldest is in the Air Force and currently stationed in South Korea. His other son just came back home temporarily from living in Nebraska and is moving to Arizona in July. And I'm, boy, I bet you he's glad you're in relocation. So welcome, Absolutely. Jim. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. And now, folks, moving right along, I'm going to introduce you to Brian. He's our chair or co-chair of sponsorship, and he has a very special guest to talk to him. Go Alrighty. ahead, Brian. Thank you, Sherry. I'm Brian Shute again with uh, the sponsorship committee. And uh, first of all, just a little more information on the golf tournament. Um, there's some really neat prizes for raffle and silent auction. I was just thinking about that there. Uh, there's tickets for Disneyland. Remember Disneyland? Yes, they're back open. So there are tickets, yes, tickets for Disneyland. So we're uh, excited about that along with uh, several other items that have been donated. So uh, please keep in mind that we're, we are seeking uh, donations for raffle and silent auction. Uh, the links are available on our website and or uh, just you know give me a buzz. Um, so uh, fantastic uh, uh, response from all of our sponsors and FMs out there. We really do appreciate it. And the, uh, everything benefits the Ronald McDonald House again. Uh, so that said, I would like to introduce Bill Seneschal with Professional Maintenance Systems. Uh, his company has been a longtime uh, sponsor and supporter of, of IFPA San Diego. We appreciate that very much, Phil, and we'd like to introduce Phil with uh, a little bit of information about his company and uh, services. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, everyone. Sherry, here, here, our, our fearless leader and, and chapter president. Thank you for having me. Well, 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 my name is Phil Seneschal. My company, Professional Maintenance Systems, PMS, has been a proud platinum sponsor of IFMA San Diego since 2012. It's my family business, and we were founded almost 40 years ago as a corporate headquarters cleaning company. And many of the facilities which we cleaned back in those days, I'm talking about Cubic, big shout out to our first customer, CP Kelco, Raytheon, Kyocera, the YMCAs of San Diego, we still clean for them this day, decades later. And we, we belong to IFMA in, in honor of those long-standing facility partnerships and in support of our professional community because that's what IFMA is. IFMA is our community. It's a community of facility manager partners and fellow building services providers. It's a community of resources of which PMS is, as I said, proud to be part of. So thank you for having us. And last thing, while I have you, while I still have the mic, I'll be looking for each and every one of you at the IFMA golf tournament on Friday, June 4th. I know Brian already went over this, but I want to plug it again and express my enthusiasm about this event. I never miss an IFMA golf tournament. So PMS will have hole 10 right after the tour, right after the turn. We're going all out. We've got a, a, a taco company again. Uh, per usual, we'll have plenty of booze, including my, my new beer, No Worries IPA uh, by Belching Beaver. We'll be raffling off a $500 taco event, which a lucky winner will go home with. And we'll be raffling off six golden tickets to a San Diego brewery tour. So please uh, uh, come see us. Um, if you have a good excuse for why you can't come to the IFMA golf tournament this year, I'd love to hear it. It's my wife's birthday. So yeah, um, I will be there and I look forward to seeing you all there too. Thank you. Back to you, Sherry. Thank you, Thank Phil. You, Phil. <laughs> well, next we have, I want to also mention that since we are skipping June for the golf tournament in July, we're going to be meeting again on July 14th, to talk about hoteling software and return to work. So that one is very interesting and is interesting to me. If you have experience with hoteling software, please put that in the chat so that Denise, our professional development chair, can get a hold of you and talk about that, okay? Next, speaking of Denise, let's hand it over to Denise to explain how we're gonna do our breakout sessions today. Denise? Sure thing. Hi, everyone. 
So I'm Denise with Milliken. I am part of the Professional Development Committee, and we wanted to do this session so that we can kind of get together and discuss best practices as it is COVID and post-COVID related. So we are going to talk about emergency preparedness and business continuity during COVID and post-COVID. How it will work is that we're gonna all be in breakout rooms and our fearless leader, Will, will put us into those breakout rooms. And it's gonna be an open discussion. We have prepared questions to ask to kind of lead the discussion. And there's gonna be a board member in each of the breakout rooms so that there's one person who can facilitate. And then we're gonna have about 10 to 15 minutes to kind of discuss the questions at hand, um, share information, get feedback. If you have other questions in mind, feel free to bounce those off of the people in your group. And then we're gonna come back together and Sherry is going to kind of lead a discussion to facilitate the answers that we came up with in our breakout rooms. And then there's gonna be a part B and we're gonna do it all again with different questions and different breakout rooms. So I'm gonna throw it over to Will and kind of see you guys in the breakout rooms. Okay, I'll be sending you to the rooms now. <laughs> it looks like everyone's back in the main room. Well, welcome back everybody. How y'all doing? Did you all enjoy yourselves? I know you did. So we'll just go on from here. So those who are leaders in the room, I'm gonna ask the questions and give us some of the answers that you received when you were in that room. First question. Have you, or how have your EP, emergency preparedness plan and business continuity plans operations changed or did they stay the same during COVID? A, based on these changes, what measures have you taken or will be taken to operate safely? And how are you funding these measures? Well, there's a lot of questions here. How have you found your business continuity to fall short? And what have your experiences been? So. Who would like to go first? Glenda, Melissa, Denise? I'll go anyone? first. Okay. Um, we kind of were a, a, all over the place with this, but I thought, you know, Rich Sharp had some really great input on his business continuity plan. Going into the pandemic, I think it it's like the most solid one I've ever heard. He had spent the last year getting everybody onto laptops and laptop-based phone systems. So they were set when the pandemic hit. And all I hear about when the pandemic hit was everybody had to come in and grab their PCs and all this equipment and bring them back home. I mean, it's fantastic. I don't think I've seen an office that's fully outfitted with complete laptops. So I call that a win right there. Um, and then um, a lot, we had one person that actually stopped external cleaning companies from coming in and did so internally. We had a lot of internal, increased internal maintenance rather than external. So I thought that was really interesting. Okay, hey, Glenda from the other room? Or was anyone else facilitating with Glenda? Yeah, if someone can take over, I'm trying to post something on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> for about today's event. So if Melissa wants to go, I'll go in last. I was in Denise's room, but um, yeah, it sounds like everybody did have to make some adjustments um, moving forward and kind of find out their culture and what was the best to navigate. Um, no one, there wasn't anyone who said, no, we didn't make any changes. It feels like everyone had to enact and do something quickly um, to move their organization forward. I know that for our company, we had a very agile um, janitorial group who was able to very quickly get us um, certain products that were a little scarce on the market, especially in mm -hmm. the disinfectant view. They were able to go with hospital grade disinfectants. We already had a MERV 13 filtration system in place. So that's one thing that Glenda back yet. I'll just keep talking. So <laughs> yeah, I'm back. I'll, okay, I'll talk after. Ahead. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I think uh, a lot of the people in, in our group, with maybe the exception of one or two, uh, stayed pretty stable during uh, lockdown and when everything started last year. And if anything, some um, parts of their companies either increased while others decreased. But for the most part, um, it was a lot of business as usual. And 
you know, obviously with the, with the changes of people uh, working from home and whatnot, that was a major pivot. And some interesting stuff that happened along the way of um, things going virtual, um, not just meetings, but actual, you know, business development of visits, you know, visit site visits had to go virtual as well, which I thought was really interesting. And if that's something that's going to um, continue in the future, in some cases it probably will. In some cases you really can't replace that in-person uh, dynamic and, and just being able to see everything in uh, first person, right? So I think a lot of us, because we're in facilities have been very lucky um, in depending on where we are and life sciences, for example, a lot of them really didn't stop working depending on the industry really. But for the most part, you know, we've been pretty lucky, I think. So thank, uh, thank our stars, uh, astronomy guy, Jim, <laughs> that uh, we're, in, we're in the businesses that we are in. That's good. Now for question two, how has communication within the company worked or not worked? You want to continue, Glenda, before we hand over to Denise and Melissa? Um, we didn't get too far into that topic, but there was one example that Adela um, gave about her previous company where, you know, they had a very dramatic reaction to the events of last year and probably made some um, decisions that weren't very well thought of and that affected people's jobs and, and, and you know, that's very, very significant, right? So people maybe just knee-jerk reactions, which is very human thing to do and obviously it's understandable as well but you know at least for her it worked out because of you know what happened in that situation for her it just may, uh, caused her to reevaluate her herself and her life and go somewhere in a different direction and be with another company that you know was be better suited for her so um yeah i think a lot of the knee-jerk reactions if people want to talk about that and um, I know my company did some of those as well. And, you know, backtracking a little bit, it's like, oh, that was wrong. Let's do this instead. And, you know, everything was changing almost every week uh, last year. So you, you were constantly having to make a left turn, right turn, reverse U-turn, things like that. And um, it was a little nerve wracking, I have to say. So, uh, you know, you just had to go with the flow and, do the best you can, you know. Mm -hmm. so. so what about Denise or Melissa, sure. anything in your group about communication? Um, well, Melissa had mentioned that her company has the program called Slack and it's a communication mm -hmm. platform and it was a super creative way to connect. And she even got to know people on a much deeper level mm -hmm. through Slack. So you wanna talk about that, Melissa? Yeah, so we do have people um, that just permanently work at home and then also people in other states. So we use Slack. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but you have Slack channels, but you can also communicate with people directly. So we have some fun channels like about pets so people can post about their pets at home. Um, we also have like a general and a, our HR company, our HR department, sorry, is called People and Culture. So we have a people and culture page to connect people that way. And you can kind of see what other people are doing um, in their state or, you know, place of work um, while, while they're at home. So, and then also getting, you know, people can talk right away. Um, you know, there could be two or three hour time difference, but it's that connection to get people connected right away if, if needed. Well, definitely. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just going to say I'm telling my company about that because we're a global company. That would be so fantastic. It and, like and there's gifts and everything. So you yeah. can add little funny things and it's a, it's a great way to interact for sure. Yeah. Um, and our company uses Teams and I'm sure some other people use different platforms as well to try to stay communicating. But it is very hard for management to communicate, especially in the beginning with the constantly changing information like Glenda had brought up. So has anyone else run into that, Denise? Um, I, I don't think we talked about that. I mean, David Suter had an 8 a.m. meeting every day for the first couple of months to get his team on board um, every day. So that was 
you know, an effective way to communicate from, you know, his level to all employees. So I am, um, I don't think a lot of people did that. There was probably mostly weekly meetings or weekly check-ins, but um, he did say that it went down, you know, to just a couple of days a week after that, but that was his way of connecting with his team. Okay. So Will, are we ready for our next session? Our next session, we'll be asking questions about what resources have you used and has there been any positive impacts with these changes during COVID? And do you have any funny stories? We love funny stories. And then any best practices? I mean, we're not done yet. So best practices are not set in stone, but if you think you got a best practice, we would love <laughs> to hear it. Share, people, share. Okay, guys, here we go off into a new breakout room. Get to know everyone and have a good time. Yeah, and uh, so some of your people in your group are have been moved into an additional room, so they're smaller um, for more interaction. So, uh, oh, that's great. Thanks, Will. So is everyone back now? Uh, they're coming back right now. I was just saying bye to Donna. It was great seeing her. It's been a while, so glad to see you. See you yeah, guys. Jim, so you guys got to get going, too. I've got a meeting I've got to get to in a little bit, so... Have a great afternoon, guys. Bye, Thanks for coming, Jim. Nice meeting you virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you soon. Is everyone well, back? Dave. Yeah, they're, everyone's back. Okay, Go ahead, well, Sherry. welcome back, everybody. We're going to ask these questions really quick because right after we answer these questions, it'll be the end of the meeting, but we're going to have another breakout session for those who want to stay and network with people. You have until 1.30. At 1.30, don't be mid-story like I was, because you'll get cut off and nobody will hear your punchline. So you really need to plan that well. So the first question we ask is, what resources have you used? Let's start with Denise. Denise, what were interesting resources that your group told you about? Um, we kind of talked about this in the previous breakout session. Um, I know someone said they used a safety, an external safety company to come in and really give them information on how to be COVID ready and, you know, post-pandemic ready. So that was interesting. Okay. And uh, Glenda, any funny stories? I love funny stories. Um, let's just say, you know, leaves were in the conversation. <laughs> No, um, I actually wanted someone else from the group to give the summary. Uh, it's just like, I just talk too much. I don't like hearing my voice. <laughs> one, of the things we learned, one of the things we learned was uh, a lot of buildings came to the realization of how important and necessary facilities personnel are. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is always a great realization. <laughs> We approve of that one. It keeps us working. Yeah. Well, in Glenda's group, we did hear a lot of people um, were looking for resources. Uh, Phil said that he had the largest resource of all. So next time, folks, we all call Phil. He's got it. <laughs> so different people did different things. I talked about bartering with other facility managers for what do you have? I got this. Let's exchange. And a lot of people went to their janitorial companies. Now, Denise, did you have any funny stories? Um, well, Chris from Back <laughs> Construction, I love the fact that he shared this. He had said a couple of the buildings initially completely shut down, plumbing, electrical, everything to save money because no one was there. And six months later, they went to turn everything back on and it's costing them twice as much to... <sighs> basically get the buildings up and running. Wow. <laughs> our, our plumber oh, no. Will is shaking his head. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We that were, doesn't sound funny at all. No. <laughs> well, you know, we closed, I have two six-story buildings. We closed a couple floors, but what we don't tell the employees is that we're secretly running the HVAC, running the water through, all that stuff, because we have to keep up the maintenance. We have to keep it going or we mm. will have a problem. Yeah. We will have a problem. So um, if anyone else in Glinda's group, Donna or Sarah or um, anyone else want to mention something that was brought up in your group setting that you thought was well, interesting? Donna had to leave, but Sarah had a really cool story um, on how they had to pivot in terms of their training. Sarah, do you want to bring that up? You're on mute. You think after a year we'd learn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we were talking about how we were in the middle of an airport relocation and we had to, to pivot because obviously the airport closed down, but we still had to plan the move. And so we went from on-site training of staff to using finding new technology, which we found a um, something called Loom. You can pre-record trainings and um, email them out to the clients. And it, and it took what would be on site for a couple of days, trying to coordinate and train hundreds of people to an email that they could watch in 15 minutes. And it really <laughs> streamlined our business model. And, and um, we've used it continually now uh, for all of our other clients because they just, you know, some want you to come in and do in person and some really like the idea of watching it at their leisure. So it helped wow. us pivot into an area that we needed to grow into way it just kind of propelled it forward a little faster okay now i have a funny story since nobody else thought it was funny i'm going to tell it anyway y'all just have to suffer so <laughs> one of the resources we had was when there was no hand sanitizer we turned to the breweries because they were they have all the alcohol mm -hmm. um and i figured that that would be good because we put that on our hands too um, like Sarah, we turned to our marketing companies who actually had hand sanitizer and they said, no problem, we'll get it to you. Well, they turned to the breweries too. And so um, my hand sanitizer, every time one of our employees would use it, smelled like tequila. <laughs> and some people, you know, they have to use a hand sanitizer 20 to 30 times a day because every time they walk through air, there's germs on them in their mind and they have to use hand sanitizer again until they were reeking like tequila. So I said, you know, this is not good because they're going to go home, get pulled over by a cop, and they're going to say, no, officer, really, I'm not drinking. It's my hand sanitizer. <laughs> so, Sherry, I, I shared a funny story. Yes, I said well, our, our only uh, supply shortage was Purell sanitizer. We had all the substitutes, but no one wants them. No one cares. Only people want Purell. Hmm. And um, another funny story, and this just came to me, I really became spoiled during this last year. I, I was working all the while and I was the only car on the freeway. It was pretty nice. <laughs> and I was flying week in, week out. And I'd be like the only guy on the plane. And one time I was flying up to Oakland and I was the only guy on the plane. It was actually me and my brother. And there was uh, the CEO uh, of, of Waxy. So <laughs> we got to just have like a, you know, this, this serendipitous uh, 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 impromptu meeting with the CEO of Waxy. It was, it was awesome. And, wow. and while I have the mic, just one positive change, and this will just take a second. And I didn't mention this to the group earlier. I think a real positive change uh, is, is, um, and, and I know that COVID was, 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 was tragic, but um, I think it, it did positively impact the cleaning industry the janitorial mm -hmm. industry. Um, I think for a long time, you guys, uh, the industry was like, was trending towards, you know, um, cost savings, you know, just let, you know, all, all, all the competition, we were just competing on cost and we were reducing service levels and we were, you know, down to trash and dash, you know, just coast, coasting through the parking lot at 15 miles an hour. And now cleaning and disinfecting have never been so relevant. We've never, we, we have the most important jobs in the world. Uh, cleaning literally saves lives. So I, I think it was a real big boost to the, um, the commercial janitorial business and, and, and my, um, my IFMA partners. I, I do want to mention something to that, yeah. Phil, because, you know, with all the physical isolation and, and cleanliness, that we've had to uh, do this past year or so. You know, my daughter went to see her cousins uh, a couple of days ago. They came over to the house and one, just a few hours with them and she caught a stomach bug and got like really sick and started throwing up. So I feel like, and I'm like, I'm the type of parent just like, you know what? You're going to put that rock in your mouth. Go ahead and put that rock in your mouth. You know, you're going to play with, put that in your mouth. I'm, I'm okay with germs. I'm totally okay with germs. Obviously not okay with COVID germs, but you know, I think that's something that people, yes, you have to wash your hands and yes, you have to stay clean. But at the same time, it's like, you need germs. You kind of need that stuff to build up your immunity and, and things. That's why we have things like vaccines. So it's a, it's a, a tough, you know, um, it's a tough balance because you do need some of that stuff to to make sure you're healthy, 
because you've been exposed to it, right? So it's been crazy. The isolation and the, I don't know if you want to call it over cleanliness, um, has us negative effects too, for sure. Yeah, true. Well, guys, yeah. we're at one o'clock. I want to thank you all for participating with us and talking to us and sharing everything you have with us. I want to thank Phil with PMS for sponsoring today's meeting and being so much fun all the time. Thank we you, want Phil. To thank you very much for thank joining you, us. Everyone, let's meet again on the golf course. So remember, you can still register. They're taking um, onesies. I think the foursomes are all sold out, but let's get some more silent auction items in. Phil can't carry the whole thing. You know, he's got the whole hole of 10, okay? So thank you everyone for being with us. We're gonna have that breakout room. If you wanna hang around, they'll put you in a room. Otherwise, we will see you at the golf course and then July for hoteling on July. Keep watching Instagram. Keep watching for your newsletters to stay in touch with us. Thank you all and goodbye. Thank you everybody.